Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our fresh episode of the Premier League show. Now, today we are going to preview week 21, I believe, of the Premier League. There's some good games coming up in this week as well. So, should be good. It's going to be a cracker. Let's crack on. Right, guys. So, as always, my game of the week for week 21 in the Premier League is, you know, it's an obvious one. It's throwing itself at us. They've played already this season, it was shit. Hopefully this one's gonna be a bit better. It's Manchester United versus Liverpool. It's the big derby. These two do not like each other. Both teams are in really good form and uh, should, should be a good game. It's, a, it's the uh, four o'clock kickoff on Sunday. So, should be a good game. Um, both teams, like I say, they're in superb Form. Manchester United, you know, have really come from nowhere to be only 10 points off the lead in the Premier League. They sit sick. Liverpool, you know, they've been going really well in the league. You know, they're second in the league, you know, only uh, five points off the top as well. Having, having really a great season, are Liverpool. You know, Liverpool, they sort their defence out, then it could be a, an amazing season. They really could push on and maybe win the league. Um, uh, going into this game, though, Liverpool did lose um, in the uh, in the in the cup. They got beat by Southampton last night. Um, I didn't even know that game was on. I didn't even know that game was being played, but it was, and they lost. Also, they got a bit of a dodgy draw as well uh, in the FA Cup against Plymouth, where Man United went out and uh, they won their game against Peter in the FA Cup. So, really going into this, some weird form for Liverpool in the cup competitions. Hopefully, it's not going to affect their league form too much, but it can. In it, it, you know, any loss, any draw is a is a negative effect on the team. It can have a negative effect on your league form as well. So. Who knows? Who knows? But you know, Manchester United are having an exceptional season, and uh, especially at the moment, they're just scoring goals for fun. You know, they're free-flowing play, really looking like a good Mourinho team as well at the back. You know, the defence is a lot better, and um, that's why I think this could just be a tasty, tasty um, game. Really, you know, the, the, they played already this season. It was boring as shit. It was fucking terrible. You know, Man United at that point didn't really know where whether they were coming or going. They kind of just sat up, sat, set the team up to just defend, and uh, they come away with a point then. But it was just so negative. And hopefully, this game we're going to see a bit more of a positive Manchester United. You know, now that Jose seems to know what he's doing and he knows his best team, his best players, could be a better game. Now, as far as score prediction for this game is concerned, I am going to go with a Manchester United win. And I'm going to go with both teams scoring. Uh, I'm going to go with Manchester United winning this game 2-1. I just personally think Liverpool are too weak at the back. It's just so negative all the time where their defence is concerned. It's just not good enough and I think with the way Manchester United are playing with it, Manchester United's attacking threat, they're going to come out the victors in this game. Right now as always ladies and gentlemen I'm just going to take each game. I'm going to run through them from the early one on the Saturday all the way through to the games on the Sunday. Now uh, this week we have Tottenham versus West Brom and Jalbion. It's a 2.30 kickoff. It's on Scott Sports. Tune in and watch it if you're a fan of either team or if you're just one of these guys that likes to watch a shitload of football like me. Um, Spurs have to say Spurs are the team at the moment uh, to beat. They've been going really, really well up to third in the league. Uh, really really exceptional win against Chelsea you know this is a Chelsea team that a lot of people were thinking were invincible couldn't be touched were beating everybody then along come Spurs and Deli Alley and uh, yeah they just completely annihilated Chelsea in that game um, I was very surprised I have to say I was very surprised you know Spurs haven't been the most convincing team this season, but the last few weeks they really have started to turn on the style, started to pick up results, and going and beating the team that, by all accounts, everybody seems to think are going to go and completely win, mash up the league and win the league. Spurs have done well, has to be said. Good, good 2 0 victory against Chelsea can only mean good things as well for the team and morale and gives them a bit of a boost. They can try and catch up now, you know, now that they know that Chelsea can be beaten, other teams can go and do it. And if they can, you know, Chelsea can lose a few games and Spurs can keep on winning, they'll close the gap 
And, you know, I did say in my predictions right at the beginning of the season, Spurs were going to be one of the teams to watch. And they're starting to prove that. Uh, West Bromwich Albion, they've been going all right. They've been picking up points. They're sitting, you know, in a healthy position in the table. I don't know exactly where they're sitting, but I know they're sitting sort of in a very healthy position, top half. They've had a good season. Considering I thought that they were going to be absolutely shocking and they were going to get relegated, they've actually completely and utterly done me because I did not expect to see the sort of football that they've been playing either. They're usually a very boring team to watch our West Bromwich Albion. They're a Tony Poulis team and, you know, you can't take anything away from the guy. He's brought in to do a job a bit like Sam Allardyce. He'll keep you in the league. He'll make sure your defence is solid. You won't lose many games. But the thing is, this team, not only are they doing all that, but they're, they're playing some good football as well. They're playing some nice stuff. He has, you know, I think this month maybe he could make some more signings and then they could really push on. You know, a top half finish for West Bromwich Albion, if they could keep this up, would be a great, great result. Um, and it'd be a great, really good season. Uh, as far as this game's concerned, though, I don't see West Bromwich Albion getting past Spurs. I just think Spurs have got a little bit too much for them. You know, you look at the strength in depth at Spurs as well. And some of their players from last season that played really well started to really turn it on. You know, Rose at the back, you've got Ericsson, Kane, Deli Ali, all playing really well. You know, Son, he's, he's been playing exceptional this season. And I just think they're going to have a little bit too much for West Bromwich Albion in this game. Uh, score prediction for this one, I'm going to go with a 2-0 Tottenham victory. Next up, guys, we've got Burnley versus Southampton. Now, Burnley have had an exceptional season to this point. 12th in the league. I only know that because they're sitting one spot above my lot. Um, and their home form is really what has been driving their season forward. Um, they've had a very good season. You know, they've, and they've, they've got some better players than I thought they had. I think the home form is the big catalyst, though, in the fact that they're having a good season. They've got that 12th man at home. The fans are there. The fans push them along. And uh, it means a lot to them. And they're going to be coming up against a Southampton team that, you know, haven't really been doing that well on the road this season. Um, and this really is a time where Burnley could prove their worth. Burnley could get the win. Burnley really should be going into this game thinking, you know, we're at home. We don't lose many games here. This is a team that are not playing too well, like, away from home. Let's push on. Let's try and beat them. You know, Southampton, the only positive for them is they're coming off a very good result in the cup you know they've just beat Liverpool and that can only mean good things because Liverpool have been exceptional this season but this is Burnley at home Burnley don't lose many games at home and I don't see them losing this one either you know Burnley are pretty much back to full strength as well don't have many injuries or suspensions so it's looking good for them and maybe you know they could push on now with their season and if they can could mean good things it could mean that they stay in the league because you know you, you have to watch the way Burnley play at home there, there are a lot of teams in this league that are playing a lot worse than they do and would probably deserve to go down more so than Burnley do at the moment Southampton like I say sorry if I'm looking behind guys the dogs are in here um, the Southampton like I say having a, having a decent season but um, I'm sure they'd want a bit more from their season they've got a good team they're just lacking some striking power. I think they need to go and attack that in this market. And if they do, then I think they'll be fine, you know. Like I say, good result in the in, in the cup. But, um, you know, in the league, they really do need to start their, you know, they need to start sorting their form out because they're not very consistent. They It's a win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. And I'm sure, it, you know, you, you can't... You, you can't have a good season based on that sort of form. Uh, as far as this game's concerned, though, I actually think Burnley stand a very good chance. Like I say, their home form is top banana, and uh, I think they could, I think they could trouble Southampton, and uh, you know, maybe even come away with a victory. And that's what I'm going to go with. I am going to go with a home win. I'm going to go with Burnley winning this game 2-1. Next up, guys, we've got Hull versus Bournemouth. Now, these are two teams that are having very, very different seasons. You know, Hull down in the bottom three. And Bournemouth, they're having a really good year. You know, 3-3 against Arsenal, the 4-3 against Liverpool. You know, they're playing really well against the big boys this season. Um, but these are the sorts of games where Bournemouth have shown that they can sort of have a lapse in their concentration at times. You know, away from home against the smaller clubs, they do drop points. Um, do I see them dropping points in this game? No, probably not. Now, don't get me wrong, Hull have been playing very well. Um, you know, 
a good draw against Everton and stuff like that, but they need to be doing a bit better. Um, that's in my opinion. Um, if they really, really want to drag themselves out of problems and off the bottom of the table, they've got to do more. And it's as simple as that. You know, you want to stay in this league, they need to get a manager in as soon as possible as well, a new manager. They need to uh, they need to make some signings in this window. They've got to strengthen that team because if they don't, they're going down, they're going back to the championship. You don't want to become a yo-yo club. You don't want to be up and down between the leagues. You want to make yourself established in the Premier League. It's one of the best in the world. The finances benefit the club. Um, and I'm sure Hull are going to be, you know, working towards that before the season's up. But at the moment, they're just not looking like a good team. They're, look, they're not looking like a good team at all. They're looking pretty shocking, especially their defence. It's comical at times. And I think if Bournemouth can really get going in this game, get their attacking threat going, they could definitely trouble Hull, definitely score some goals. You know, they've already played each other this season. Bournemouth completely turned them over in that game. Will we see a repeat of that performance? We'll have to wait and see until, you know, until Saturday. And uh, But it's possible. Bournemouth have got it in them. Bournemouth can dismantle you when they want to. Uh, as far as a score prediction for this game is concerned, I am going to go with an away win. I'm not going to go with the silly result that, you know, Bournemouth managed earlier on in this season, but I am going to go with a 3-1 Bournemouth victory. Next up, guys, we've got Sunderland versus Stoke. Now, both these teams have been doing all right. Sunderland probably a bit shitter than Stoke. Stoke have been picking up points, you know, and uh, that's all you need to be doing. You know, if you're consistently winning and drawing, it's a good thing for you. I know Stoke have had a few games this season would have been absolutely terrible, but I was very, you know... Uh, I don't even know. I was very, I felt very enthusiastic about Stoke after you know their performance against Chelsea. Um, I feel like that's the sort of you know they they kind of showed the cracks that were there with Chelsea when they when they had that four two loss to them. Spurs then just have a better team and exploited it, but Stoke kind of showed us that, and that's the sort of if Stoke could perform like that week in week out, then they'd probably beat more teams and pick up more points. You know, it was a really good performance from them. Um, they have been picking up some points, and they've been playing a lot better than they were at the beginning of the season. Uh, you know, it, it, it's quite hard for me to preview these games because it's been a while. You know, we've had, a, we've had an FA Cup week, and the madness of like Christmas and New Year, the schedule in this country with football is just ridiculous. So it is quite difficult. But, you know, Stoke, they're going all right. They're having, a, they're having an okay season. I'm pretty sure they'd be wanting to have a better season than they actually are. But we've still got five months left. There's still plenty of football to be played, plenty of goals to be scored, and I'm sure Stoke will be working towards that in this latter part of the season. Um, Sunderland, it's not been a good season for them. It's not. They had a bit of a renaissance period, didn't they, where they were picking up points and winning games and doing very, very well. But... You know, they went and got beat 4-1 by Burnley. And yes, they got a good draw against Liverpool, but they're still, still, you know, down there, bottom bottom of the table, like near the bottom of the table, not having a good season at all. They're gonna, they've got a lot of injuries at Sunderland as well. They've got players going off to the African Cup of Nations. So they really are up shit creek without a paddle and uh, he needs sorting out soon. I think Sunderland... You know, the manager's already been told he ain't going to be given any funds. He ain't going to be given much money to sort this club out. So he's going to have to attack the loan market, probably. I feel for the manager um, and I feel for the fans because really the it, it's like the chairman's lost interest in that club and he's not willing to help them out. And without the help, they're going to go down. They're going to be relegated. They've been flirting with it for a few seasons now and it's starting to look like it could be a reality. I think the biggest thing for us on them at the moment is they need to try and hold it to... Uh, Oh, keep hold of Jermaine Defoe. You know, he's been linked with a few clubs. My club as well have already apparently made a £6 million offer for him. You know, he is a bit older. You're not going to pay a lot of money for uh, Jermaine Defoe. But he's a proven goal scorer. I'm sure any team in the league would love that in their ranks. Now, as far as this game's concerned, I don't really know where it's going to go. You don't know what you're going to get from either of these teams. I think, you know, on their day, both can beat each other. Sunderland at home are obviously a bit better than they are away from home. It's the difficult one. I can't separate the teams, and that's why I'm going to go with a draw. Going with a 1-1, and I actually think that both teams will probably welcome the, the point. I think they'd both be, both be happy with taking the, the point away. Next up, we've got Swansea versus Arsenal. Now, Swansea, they're not having the best seasons, are they? They're not, but... 
They turned it. They turned it around the other week. They got a win. They got a new manager in. That's that's great stuff. You know, that's. I like to see that. You know, you get rid of someone, you get a new boy or a new man in very very quickly, and uh, because that's that's what you need, especially this part of the season. You know, new, we're into the new year now. Got to push on. Got to start picking up points because if you don't, you're going down. You know, I, I think realistically if they haven't picked up enough points by sort of like March, April then you can kiss your Premier League season goodbye because it's just it's just how it is, it's too competitive now and I'm, I'm sure that's what Swansea's thinking was when they appointed the new manager, got him in really quickly and I like the fact they got him in before the January transfer window kicked off as well because he can come in now and he can identify maybe some players that he's had under his ranks before or some players he likes to look of and they can help him out, get him in the club, see if they can help push their season on as well and help him survive because, you know, Swansea are one of them teams, they've been in the Premier League a while when they first come into the league they were exquisite and over the last couple of seasons just kind of gone downhill a little bit but they're one of the teams I wouldn't really like to see go out of the league. Um, I'd like to see them stay. Uh, I, just, I, I, I quite like I quite like Swansea as a football club. Uh, Arsenal, they've been having a good season, haven't they? I don't know if they're, what are they, fifth? I think they're fifth now. They've been having a good season, but they've had better seasons. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have been calling for Wenger's head, especially after the 3-3 against um, Bournemouth. And uh, it was a very typical Arsenal display, that. Yes, they showed fight to come back from 3-0 down, but really, against a team like Bournemouth, no disrespect, they should be doing more. They should be picking up the points, all three, and keeping up with the title challenge. This is the problem that a lot of Arsenal fans have got. They've got the team in place, they've got good enough players, but they just don't challenge, and they're not consistent enough. This is the biggest problem as well, they're just not consistent enough. They should be sweeping the floor with the majority of the league. A bit like the other teams have been this season. Your Liverpools and your Chelsea's. They've been doing that this year. They've, they've been picking up the points that matter. Do you know, Spurs haven't lost many games this season. I think Spurs have only been beaten by the big boys. I don't think any of the smaller clubs have got near them. Okay, they've drawn a few games, but that's, that's the pedigree. That's what you've got to do if you want to try and win this league. And I just don't think Arsenal have got it in them anymore. I think the manager's got a bit soft. And he needs to crack on. He needs to crack down on his players. And maybe a signing or two would help as well. You know, we've been saying it for a long time, but Arsenal's defence is fucking horrible. Invest in some proper defenders. That's where I would start personally. And then go from there. I think as far as this game's concerned though, I don't think Arsenal have got any worries. I think I think they should beat Swansea quite comfortably, in my opinion. Um, Swansea have got probably one of the worst, the most laughable defences in the league. Some of the defending has been comical this season. And I think Arsenal will definitely exploit that. Score prediction for this game and away win. I'm going to go with a 2-0 Arsenal victory. Next up, we've got Watford versus Middlesbrough. And, uh, you know, both teams, they're not having the best time of it at the minute. Middlesbrough need to really start picking up some wins again. And Watford, they've been on a bit of a... Bit of a, a nosedive, haven't they? They had a really good start to the season, but now they're really starting to struggle. I think a lot of the problem, as far as Watford is concerned, not so much the manager, he is, but he's taking a lot of the flack at the minute, and apparently he's, he's only got a few games to save his job. I think the biggest problem for Watford is the amount of injuries they've got. You know, they put out a team the other week, a very a, a weakened team because of injuries, and then two more players went off injured, and then there was another game where a player went off in the warm up, and they just can't seem to keep their players fit at the moment. Moment. You know, you couple that with the fact that their two strikers just are not scoring goals. You know, Garlo is on a horrible drought at the minute, can't hit a barn door. Uh, you know, I think this is why they're struggling. It's just everything is going against them. Nothing's in their, nothing's in their corner. And uh, that's why they're having a bit of a shit time of it at the minute. And I, I actually feel a bit sorry for them because, you know, like I say, beginning of the season, they're going really well top half you know they were consistently in the top half of the table and having a really solid season Middlesbrough I think they'll be happy with what they've done to this point uh, definitely I think they've had a, an, an okay season uh, so far I am quite surprised that Burnley are, do, are having a better season than them I thought Middlesbrough strengthened their squad a lot better than the other two promoted teams did but it's their first season back for a while, and a few of these players as well are probably still getting used to the league. Um, but like I say, though, they've still got the players. 
and they've still got a very good manager and they can still win games and you know I wouldn't be surprised if Middlesbrough went into this one uh, with one eye on victory because of the way that Watford have been playing now as far as a score prediction goes for this game I am actually going to go with an away win and mainly just because Watford are struggling so badly with their injuries um, I'm going to go with a 2-1 Middlesbrough victory three points for them next up we've got my boys West Ham United versus Crystal Palace now this is the return of the Mac isn't it yes uh, sir Sam Allardyce is going to be coming back uh, you know to West Ham to face us he has already done this at other clubs but you know this is going to be his first game back as an opposing manager where we're playing in our new stadium now the new stadium is shit old it's horrible we're built for football not going to say any more on it we're you know, we can't keep blaming the stadium for our failures. We got absolutely annihilated in the FA Cup by Manchester City. We were useless um, in that game. I, I actually didn't even know it was on the telly. And it weren't until my mum, of all people, texted me and said, West Ham is shit, uh, that I knew it was on. And I was like, what do you mean? Text about, what do you mean? I don't, don't know what you mean. She went, oh, West Ham, you're on the telly. Uh, and you're getting battered 4-0 at the minute and I was like wow okay and yeah we're just shocking we're shit and the thing is a lot of the time we keep blaming it on the new stadium you know our home form's been terrible and we keep blaming it on that and Alan Shearer said something very very wise on on the um, FA Cup sort of uh, he was one of the pundits on the game and he turned around and said you've got to get to the point where you stop blaming the stadium and you start blaming the fact that the players are not putting in a shift there's not enough passion not enough determination and they need to do better and I completely completely agree with Alan Shearer because we've got some really good players and we've got a very good team some of the new signings didn't hit the ground running but I don't see why the team of last year they're all still there I don't see why they can't be playing to the same standard they did last season that's my that's my argument they had an exceptional season last year. I don't see what's so different this season. I really don't. And that's what's bothering me at the moment as far as West Ham are concerned. This is a very, very important game. We're only seven points off the drop, 13th in the league. Crystal Palace are a team that are really struggling at the moment. This is a team that we have to exploit their weaknesses. We have to go for it. I'd play two up front. Just take a punt. Just have a go. That's what I would do if I was the West Ham manager. You know, there's a lot of rumours that he's got two or three games to save his job as well. And the thing is, the next few fixtures are games that he should be winning. So if he does lose, when he loses his job, wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't. But then who do you bring in? This is the problem that you've got at the moment in, 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 the, in the world of football. Now, like I say, Crystal Palace are not having a good time of it their self at the minute. Conceding a lot of goals. Losing to teams you just you wouldn't expect them to lose to. They need to start picking up some results. And they're just getting bad. They're just getting played off the park at the minute by a lot of teams. They've got a few shining lights in their team. You know, Zaha's been playing very well. But I'm pretty sure he's off to the AFCON with Ivory Coast because he's changed his, uh, his, his allegiance. And, uh, you know, West Ham as well. They've got some players going off to that competition. So both are going to be a bit weakened by the loss of some good players. But Crystal Palace, they can't be using it as an excuse. They've got to start picking up points, and they've got to start picking up points very, very quickly. You know, they've brought in Sam to save their season, to keep them in the league. Can he do it, though? There seems to be such a negative feel about the club at the moment. This one could even be beyond him. Now, as far as the score prediction is concerned for this game, I find it super, super difficult to separate the two teams. I find it really difficult to believe that my team can win at home as well. Um, I've been over there all season, I'm a season ticket holder and we are just so bad at home and uh, so it's really hard for me so I, I can't separate them, I'm going with a draw, I'm going to go over 1-1 one, one, and I guarantee it'll be like I'm shitting on. Next up guys we've got Leicester versus Chelsea, this is the 5.30, it's on BT Sport for those that support the clubs and are interested in watching it. Uh, off of the neutral like I say now Chelsea they've had an exceptional season but it's been proven that they're not invincible because Spurs went and beat them now as far as Leicester are concerned they've had an all right oh, no they've not they've had a shit season haven't they they've had a terrible season but the last couple of weeks they have started to turn it around a little bit good win at home against West Ham and then uh, you know they got a draw away from home 
their away form is still the problem in my opinion. Yes, they have lost uh, games at home this year, but it's the away form. I think that's no win in 11 away games. That's what they need to sort out. Now, for good for them, you know, a good point now is that Leicester are at home. And the thing about Leicester at home against teams like Chelsea is they seem to turn up. They've already beaten Manchester City at home this season. They just seem to play better against the big boys. They seem to get up for these games a bit more. And I'm sure in this game it will be no different. Now Chelsea are going to be coming into this game in need of a win. In need of getting their Premier League season back on track. Yes, it seems crazy me saying that. But the league is so competitive. Every loss really, really is torturous. Because it can have the biggest effect if the teams below you are winning and punishing you at the end of the day. But Chelsea, they've got a great team. They've got some good goal scorers. I think they'll be refreshed. You know, they rested a few players for their FA Cup game. They're going to come into this game with all their team fit, ready and raring to go and trying to get the points. Now, as far as a score prediction for this game is concerned, though, I'm going to go with Chelsea win. I think they'll get their season back on track. As good as Leicester are against the big boys, I just think Chelsea are going to have a bit too much for them. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Chelsea victory. And the last game for us to talk about, ladies and gents, is the 1.30 kickoff on Sunday. It's on Sky Sports and it's Everton versus Manchester City. Now, Man City are sitting fourth in the league, I believe. And Everton, you know, it's been a bit up and down, hasn't it? I'm not sure where they are. I think they might be in the lower part of the upper bit of the part of the league. Um... Man City have been a big disappointment for me this season. I think we all expected that Pep would come in and do bigger and better things than he has. And I think he's actually quite found the English league quite difficult to deal with. Um, Everton, they're having a decent season. I wouldn't say they're having an exceptional season. But, um, you know, they've started scoring goals. They've started picking up points again. Can only mean good things, uh, you know, for them. And this part of the season, you know, if they can really turn it on for the next few months could be you know a really good finish i don't see them finishing inside the top six i think that's just far too competitive this year all the big clubs are really pushing on really playing well and i think that's tied up already but seventh eighth ninth that would be a good season for everton i think and uh they'll be trying for the three points against manchester city but after the way i saw manchester city completely tear west ham apart the other night i don't see everton getting past Manchester City that's not me putting Everton on West Ham's level because trust me they're not Everton are a better team than West Ham especially this year but just Manchester City were exquisite the other night from the highlights that I see and uh, you know if they could play like that in the league week in week out then teams would be quaking in their boots and teams would have a lot to worry about this is the thing where Manchester City are concerned they've got the quality they've got the players they just don't seem to do it every week that's what they've got to start doing if they can start doing that, then they'll be, you know, they'll be a problem for a lot of teams. And I think that's going to be the big thing in the last few months of the season is they're not going to be able to lose many games and they're definitely not going to be able to lose many games to the clubs that they would consider smaller than them, like your Everton's and stuff. Um, and that's it, really. They've got to win every game now if they really want to win the league because I think they are... They've lost a few too many games and their form has been far too inconsistent for us to really consider them worthy title winners or contenders at the moment. They need to turn it around. Pep needs to turn it around. Will he lose his job if they don't get close? I don't know. I hope not because it's not, the, it's not a complete team and they do need some signings and I'm sure Pep will still want to get his own players in there. But as far as this game's concerned, score prediction, Manchester City win 2-0. So there we have it, ladies and gents. That is week 21 of the Premier League, all previewed for your viewing pleasure. It's going to be a good week of football. I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm sure you all are too. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode of the Premier League Preview Show, be sure to be showing me some appreciation and drop me a like on this video if you're yet to subscribe to my channel but you love the content on here make sure you smash the shit out of that subscribe button but until next time you beautiful people i've been dan you've been legends this has been the premier league preview show peace out my homies <laughs>